One more thing that is happening uh, with the energy sector is that uh, renewables, everybody has solar, people are, they also have EVs. So we are now putting a lot of load on the grid when we are charging our EVs. At the same time, we are sending electrons back because we are generating electricity at home as well. How has that also added to that complexity? It's exponentially increased it, right? And instead of having a centralized one-way flow of electricity from a large central power plant going over transmission lines through a distribution grid and being consumed at the edge in your house, my house, uh, you have now a distributed system, uh, distributed generation, distributed consumption, and the, the load on the edge uh, you know, electric cars, heat pumps, uh, electric hot water heaters is larger than it was previously. Like an, an electric vehicle is, is almost like adding another house's load to the grid. But it's also flexible, right? You, you can make decisions about when you want to charge. And that's, that's, uh, that's a very powerful concept because as we have um, variable generation, you know, we had an eclipse in the U S a few days ago. What happens when there's a solar eclipse is solar production goes way down. Uh, and so then as, as a grid operator, you have two choices. You can either find alternative sources of generation, typically natural gas peakers, which are expensive and dirty, or you can reduce consumption. Um, and with increased flexible grid edge loads, we have more power to reduce consumption and control that to match the generation. And so that's an asset, but it's also incredibly complicated. It's a much more data-driven optimization, real-time IoT sensors. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's almost as if we're becoming a, utilities are becoming a, a digital network overlaid on top of the physical one. And that's a very new concept. 